Hi third graders, today we are on lesson 19 and this lesson is all about using a number line um, and plotting numbers on it that are greater than one and then using those fractions to compare two sets of fractions. So you can see up at the top that we have three number lines and various fractions that they want us to plot. This should look really familiar to what you've already done before um, in the last few lessons. So none of this top part should really be um, new information to you. Now, I'm going to start with um, the first one. They want us to, um, they want us to use fourths and they want us to plot those three points on. Now I'm just going to label most everything and I'm going to start with my first hole between one and two, I'll make fourth. So I'll split it in half, split each half in half. Um, you should be doing this on your problem set si side of the paper. This is the problem set. Make sure you've split between one and two into fourths. Then from two to three, we will split it into fourths again. So we'll split it in half and each half in half. Make sure you have it split into fourths. Pause the video if you need more time. Now we will label. So one whole is the same as four fourths. This would be five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, two is the same as eight fourths, nine fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, three is the same as 12 fourths. Go ahead and label yours now. When you're done labeling, we will plot a point at those fractions. So I will put a point at nine fourths, cross it off. I will put a point at six fourths, cross it off. And I will put a point at 11 fourths and cross it off. Pause the video until yours looks like mine. All right, we are on to our next problem. This problem has us dealing with thirds. You can see that the number lines here, they start and they stop at the same numbers. So they all start at one today and see how they're all lined up. And they all end at three today, which means that their holes are the same size. We're going to keep that in mind as we compare later on. So for this thirds, we are going to split each hole into thirds now. So between one and two, I need to split it into thirds. And between two and three, I need to split it into thirds. Do that on yours. Now I will label one is the same as three thirds. Then I just count up four thirds five thirds, two is the same as six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, and three is the same as nine thirds. Make sure your number line looks like mine. And we will plot the points. We need to plot our first one at eight thirds, cross it off. We need to plant the second, or plot the second one at four thirds, and the third one is at seven thirds. Now I am ready for my third number line. If you are not, pause the video and finish writing that out first. Okay, now I'm on sixth. So between one and two, I need to break it into six equal pieces. I'm going to use my thirds to help me. So I'm going to just imagine my line going straight down like that. And I'm going to imagine this line going straight down like that. So I have thirds, and now I just need to split them each in half. Do that on yours, please. Use your thirds to help you with sixth. I'll pinch the parts to count. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I will do the same thing between two and three. I will use the thirds above to help me. and then I will split each one in half. One, two, three, four, five, six, good. Make your sixth and pause the video until you're ready. 
Okay, now I need to label. One is the same as six sixth. Then I just count up. Seven sixth, eight sixth, nine sixth, ten sixth, eleven sixth, twelve sixth, thirteen sixth, fourteen sixth, fifteen sixth, sixteen sixth, seventeen sixth. And three is the same as 18 sixth. Go ahead and label yours just like I have. Pause the video if you need to. Now we are going to plot the points. So I need to do nine sixth first. Put a point there and cross it off. 13 sixth the second. Put a point there. And seven or seven sixth is the last one. So that's over here. Okay, so now I have plotted all my points for these number lines. You can go ahead and pause the video if you do not have this all done yet. When we resume, you need to have a highlighter, a yellow highlighter out. Okay, so right now what I want you to do is I want us to highlight all the ones where we've plotted a point. So I'm going to, using my yellow highlighter, highlight 6 fourths, 9 fourths, and 11 fourths. Also going to highlight four thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds. I'm going to highlight seven sixth, nine sixth, and thirteen sixth. Go ahead and highlight yours. Pause the video until you do. All right, those highlights are going to help me when I get down to this next part, which is. Um, actually comparing the fractions. So we will use those fractions that we've just put on our number line to help us compare. Our first problem is 9 fourths and 4 thirds. So 9 fourths, I got to look at the fourths, so that's here, 9 fourths and 4 thirds. They want to know which one's larger. Well, you can see clearly that 9 fourths is larger because it's all the way this far away from 1, whereas 4 thirds is only this far away. So when I mark 9 fourths, I will make it the larger of the two fractions. I'm going to erase my arrows now. And I'm not going to erase my circles. Now I will go down below and do 13 sixths and 8 sixths. So 13 sixths, I'll circle it and 8 thirds. 8 thirds is over here. Which one is greater? Well, if I compare how far they are away from, z from 1, okay, 8 thirds is that far, 13 sixth is this far. Clearly, 8 thirds is larger. It's farther away from 1, which means it's farther away from 0. Now I will move on to 4 thirds and 6, or in 7 sixths. So I will circle 4 thirds, or I'll look at 4 thirds, and I will look at 7 sixth. Okay. So if I compare them, I can see that they are not equal to each other, and 4 thirds is actually farther away if I look at that red line. So that means 4 thirds is larger than 7 sixth. Next, I'll do 6 fourths and 7 thirds. So I will erase from the previous one. And I will look at my new fractions. 6 fourths is up here. 7 thirds is right here. Which one's larger? Well, definitely 7 thirds because it's farther away from 1, which means it's farther away from 0, meaning a bigger number. See how much longer that second red line is? That means that 7 thirds is larger. All right, off to our last two. You should be writing these in as well. 3 thirds and 12 sixth. Hey, I don't even need to look for this one. 3 thirds, that's equal to one whole. 12 sixth, that's more than a whole because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. I automatically know the 12 6 will be bigger. And if I double check, I know that 12 6 is right here. 
and I know that 3 thirds is right here. And yeah, definitely 12 sixths is larger. Last one, 9 sixths and 6 fourths. So I'm going to find 9 sixths and I'll find 6 fourths. Okay, those two are really close to each other. I would have to be really careful and draw a straight line down. Okay. In this case, they're so close that they might actually be the same. Nine sixth and six fourths. Well, hmm. Nine sixth. Six times four is twenty-four. So if they find a common denominator, six times four. 9 times 4, so that's 36. 6 fourths, common denominator, 4 times 6, 6 times 6. Yeah, those are actually, oops, 6 times 6 is 36. 36 24 is 36 24, those are equal. You can see mine was just a tiny little bit off here, but they should have actually been exactly equal with each other, okay? Those are equivalent fractions. So what you're going to do now, make sure you have all this done for your um, problem set. The only things you need colors for are the highlighted yellow parts, remember? Um, but now you guys are going to work on your homework page, which is the second side of this assignment. Um, again, you're going to have to plot the um, number lines, the points on the number lines, and then you will use those number lines to compare the fractions below. Don't just guess. You need to actually like do what I did and compare by thinking about how far they are away from one. Go ahead and get started on your homework. Turn it in when you're